Meet Marjorie Rice. In 1975, she was a housewife and a mother to five children. When her kids were in school, she had a lot of free time on her hands. So, since her eldest son had a subscription to Scientific American, she began poking through Martin Gardner's articles on recreational mathematics. Marjorie had enjoyed math in school, but hadn't really been able to pursue it because her school had tracked her into secretarial work. Now suddenly she was reading with delight about new discoveries mathematicians were making. They found new ways to cover the plane with pentagons. They thought they'd found them all. So, at the age of 52, in complete secret, Marjorie started doing math, playing with pentagons and trying to find a tiling of her own. After several years, Marjorie found four completely new pentagonal tilings. She communicated with mathematicians and even had her work published in mathematics journals. It's an incredible story, inspiring, and also surprising. Um, and you're probably surprised in some way about, about this story. Are you surprised that, uh, that something new was discovered in mathematics at all? I mean, how often does that happen and, and how recently? Are you surprised that a woman did this, and a housewife, and a mother, and um, someone who didn't have any formal mathematics training? Um, are you surprised that she was doing math just for fun, on her own time, and of her own accord? Our understanding of the story may reflect our conceptions of math as a subject. It's very easy to think that mathematical discovery is extremely rare, or that the only people that can really do math are geniuses, or mathematicians with advanced degrees, or prodigious insight. Um, and that for the rest of us, math is just too hard, or it's boring, or it has to be wrapped into something fun like a game. So is Marjorie Rice some untapped genius, or is, are some of those ideas about math wrong? If you're a middle schooler, growing up and learning math within all of this, you may be getting the wrong idea. There is a good chance that math, to you, feels like this. Isolating, competitive, alone. Now, obviously, that's an exaggeration, though that must have happened somewhere. Um, but it's a better chance that Matthew feels like this, which is just as isolating and competitive and alone. Now, this is not what I want to fill my Saturdays with, though, I mean, math competitions have a big role in mathematics, and it's really great for some kids. But if this is the only way that kids can choose to do math, then we're really putting forth the notion that math is about being the best. In the popular imagination, math is thought of as static and also monolithic. Uh, most of the math that we learn about in school was discovered hundreds, if not thousands, of years ago. And so the job of students is to study hard and to catch up with all of that stuff, which means working your way through a lot of these. Um, math is often just seen as one long, impersonal slog through a bunch of material, jumping through hoops and standing up to someone else's measure of what success is. None of which is very enticing or fun. Where's the fun in math? A lot of fun in schools has been built up around Pi Day, which is fantastic. <laughs> but if this is what comes away from those days, it's a very shallow slice of mathematical culture, right? Shut your pie hole? <laughs> a lot of this is just notational inside jokes. And, and our fascination with the digits of pi is poorly informed and beside the point. This is not mathematics, and it's hardly mathematical. So the culture of mathematics is alienating and off-putting, and this is what we're up against every day in our classrooms. As teachers ourselves, we try to put something else in its place. We give our students opportunities to pose their own questions, to answer them in their own ways, to do art, to write proofs. In our classrooms, the questions that, are, that we ask are the ones that we find compelling, and the answers that we use are the ones we find convincing. Uh, but our classrooms are not enough. It's not enough to have little islands of creativity and support whenever there's a whole ocean of this other, more negative and off-putting math culture. We need to help kids connect to something bigger uh, and beyond our classrooms so that they feel really at home with mathematics. So consider for a second how much easier it is to see that broader culture for something like reading, right? Um, kids know people that read, perhaps their parents read. And actually kids, some kids do read for fun. And they know that there are, books, there are book clubs and bookstores, and every neighborhood has a library, but there's nowhere for them to do math. And how many, kids, or how many people does the typical kid know who do math in their spare time? Where would a kid go if they wanted to do math on a weekend? Marjorie Rice had Scientific American and Martin Gardner, but what do our kids have? For most of us, math is math class. That's what math is. And in the absence of a teacher or assigned problems or explanations, how can we possibly do math? We need a space beyond the walls of our classroom where kids can engage with mathematics and grow in their own ways. A space for learning beyond the classroom. 
That sounds like a job for the internet. <laughs> now, there's a, a lot of, of, of skepticism about online learning, and rightfully so. Um, but I'll say from personal experience that I have learned so much about math and connected to it online, not through some program or some MOOC, uh, but through my own searches and my own following through of resources, um, journal articles and videos and pages made by amateur and professional mathematicians. I've learned more in, outside of school about mathematics um, than I ever did in school. And it's all been from the internet. And I wanted to share that kind of experience with kids. But those kinds of good resources can be very hard to find. So say you're a kid and you want to do some fun math and you write, you Google, I want to have fun doing math. Well, the results are pretty disappointing. Practice math, win awards, and have fun. To have more fun while doing your homework, use fun stationery. Is it weird that I like doing math? How is that for reinforcing a negative stereotype? Uh, so kids need help. And that's why we started writing Math Munch. It's a blog that we write on a weekly basis where we try to share and curate the mathematical internet for kids because they can't do it alone. Uh, it's a place that they can go to to make a connection with the subject on a reliable basis um, and also use it as a springboard to have their own mathematical adventures online. So each week, one of us writes a post featuring three mathematical finds from the internet. And because there are a lot of ways to engage in mathematics, we share different kinds of things. Puzzles and problems for kids to actually do, games for them to play, things to make, mathematical arts and crafts, videos to watch, and articles and interviews to read. We want to show them that there are lots of ways to bring math into your life, and that they can. And since math has many branches, we try to incorporate those into our posts as well. We post about things that kids see a lot in school, like numbers and geometry. But we also post about things that they may not see, like topology and fractals. These are often considered to be advanced topics, but we try to post resources that kids will find engaging and write about them in ways that they can understand. And while it's important to us to make mathematics accessible to kids and these advanced resources, we don't fluff things up or water them down. Math doesn't need a beautician. It needs ambassadors. We're not going to stick just any old game up there just because it's got some numbers and some dollar signs and some hurrah enthusiasm. We want to give kids experiences in mathematical games where pushing and pulling things around is the mathematical experience itself. And while giant silvery pies as sculptures um, is a perfectly cool thing, we want to share with kids math art that draws them in to the creative experience and gives them something to think about. Um, it's these people. <laughs> to break down the myth of mathematician as genius, we always feature the faces behind the ideas. When we share someone's work, we also share their name and their stories, and we reach out to them for interviews to add to our growing Q&A page. If a student finds something there that they can relate to, then they're that much more likely to see what's mathematical inside themselves or identify as a mathematician in some small but powerful way. So Math Munch has, over time, become a really great reservoir of resources, and that's really important. But even more importantly, it is a dynamic and changing document that reflects our work as mathematicians. We are mathematicians. We learn a lot of math. And the words that we use to write about this reflect our passions. We learn. We explore. And we need to communicate that to our students. They can't learn that from a static textbook. They can learn that from watching us. Uh, so on a given post, there might be uh, links to a game and to an applet, uh, to an interview, an article, maybe a dozen different web pages. Uh, MathBunch is a jumping off point and, and not just a destination. Uh, if a kid doesn't make it past the first paragraph before they're off jumping through different links and seeing what else is out there, that early exit isn't a problem. It's the whole point. So you can see that each, each post is really full of a lot of content. And we've been doing this for more than a year and a half. And so we've amassed a lot of things. I think people wonder, how do you keep doing that? How do you really find all of this great math on the internet for kids? Uh, one central way is uh, through what Patrick called the math Twitter blogosphere. There are so many people out there, educators and mathematicians, who share amazing math resources through their blogs, on Twitter, um, and in real life. We owe so much to all of these people uh, we've learned so much from them, and uh, we want to express our appreciation. Another way that this happens is through our own work as mathematicians. For example, I knew that these balance problems existed. How many glasses will balance with the bottle, given the way that these scales are even? 
but I wondered what happens if the scale tips? What information do you get? So I wrote a series of problems based on imbalance. In each case, you're asked to order the three shapes by weight, given the tipping of the scales. And in researching the post, I found another type of、uh, balance problem relying on torque and number theory. In each case, and with a lot of what we do, we're trying to give something that's accessible and enticing, but requires careful, clever thought. And of course, we use the internet. We search the web for stuff that we post. The key, though, is knowing what kinds of searches will be fruitful. Over time, you develop the expertise to know that if you look up topology pants, you will find a whole host of mathematical things to post on on our site. I honestly, when we started doing this, didn't believe that we'd be able to keep it up.、Um, I just didn't think there was enough out there. But clearly, I was wrong.、Um, there is a whole lot on the mathematical internet, and I think we've only just begun to tap into it. So that's what our site is like. That's how we put it together. What happens when you give it to kids?、Uh, so this is the very first post.、Uh, it was about mazes, spirals, and paper folding.、Um, and the day after we put it up there,、uh, one of my fifth graders came into into class、um, and was so excited and proud to share with me、uh, this maze that she had made the previous year. She had made the connection outside of class on her own time in a personal quiet moment. That something that she had done. Just by being herself was mathematical, that she was a mathematician, and that her work had a place in this much bigger world. We want that experience to have happen for every single kid. That math is a is a big tent, and there's room for them. Um, later in the year, my sixth grade students and I were studying repeating decimals, which is a really challenging topic, and we were struggling with it and slogging through it. When one day, one of the students came in and said she'd seen a video on Math Munch that proved everything we were doing was wrong. Uh oh. Well, in this video, Vi Hart, who we love very much, showed that 0.9 repeating does not equal one. Well, it does equal one, but my student didn't know this.、Um, also, it was an April Fool's Day video, so we watched it again and again in class until, by the last time through, my students had seen all the mistakes and were rolling around on the floor laughing every time she made a new one.、Um, through bringing this into class, our students were able to take ownership of something they were finding particularly challenging. Our site provides great math content to our audience, but we also provide an audience for math content, and the mathematicians we speak with are grateful for that. In fact, one of our students was considering starting a blog of her own to share her mathematical art—these intricate pen and paper tessellations—and it was the fact that we would share her work on Math Munch that gave her the nudge she needed to start the site, keep creating her mathematical art, which will now be exhibited internationally at the Bridges Conference. We've also had middle schoolers、uh, of their own accord have, be excited about making their own math blogs,、uh, where they share problems that they've written,、uh, art, math art that they've made, and reviews of games that they've enjoyed playing. What our students have learned from Math Munch, one of the many lessons, is that there is an audience out there for great mathematical work, and that sharing math is an important part of what the mathematical experience is all about. There are a lot of math communities already out there, and we try to highlight them in our posts. Some of them are formal research communities. Some are informal communities where mathematicians can ask and answer questions. Some are institutions where mathematicians can show their work. By featuring them on our site, we give our students opportunities to use their voices within these already established communities. And community grows around Math Munch as well. We've been pleasantly surprised by the readers we have outside of our school, and in fact, around the world. You know, it is nice to see Math Munch reblogged in Italian. Some of the students at our school actually made contact with an international school in Taiwan, and together they competed on mathematical games from our games page.、Uh, a lot of our, our readers are teachers, just like us,、um, who have found something exciting on Math Munch that inspires them.、Uh, so for them, we created a for teachers page where we share why we do this thing we do on Math Munch,、um, And also share some of the ways that we use Math Munch in our classrooms, like asking kids to write reflections about things they've enjoyed in posts.、Um, This unfortunately hasn't taken off quite like we want it to.、Um, Math Munch hasn't caught on in other classrooms like it has in ours, but that's one of our goals for the future. But we know. I mean, this is our blog. We write it because we love to, and our kids love it. It's not a solution to any large problem. It's not for everyone. If a teacher reads it for inspiration or enjoyment, great. And if they share it with their students and they get something from it, that's even better because that's why we're doing this. It's about the personal act of sharing mathematics. We write our blog in the hope that others will do more of the same. We have one last story to share with you. It's about Anna's third grade class. They really loved this story about Marjorie Rice, the way that she found something new in in the math world that no one had found. It was inspirational and it stuck with one student in particular. 
When we got back from spring break, this was a few weeks ago, this girl came up to me and said that she had something she wanted to share with our class. Now, we hadn't had any homework over the break, so I wasn't sure what it could be about. Well, she came up to the board and told our class that she'd spent a lot of her vacation thinking about tilings with pentagons and hexagons and all kinds of shapes. By hearing this story about a woman she could relate to and hearing about a new thing that we hadn't studied yet in class, tilings, this girl found a way to bring a personal connection to mathematics and find a space in the mathematical world. These are some drawings that a couple of my seventh graders made about what math munch represents to them. Windows looking out onto a mathematical landscape full of Apollonian gasket roads and infinite decimal sunbeams. Um, for, for them, having access to a wider world isn't enrichment, even though it's enriching. It's something that every kid needs to have, not something that's tacked on as extra. Um, math Munch is a way of taking the math world that's out there and bringing it into our classrooms, and it's a way to help kids see the world beyond our classroom and connect to it. That world is out there 24 hours a day, every day, and it's available to anyone who wants to take a look. We hope you will. Bon appetit.